Hi, and welcome to Feature Fridays. Uh, my name is Guy Bartram, and today I'm joined by Daniel and Shagan. Daniel, do you want to start by kicking off and introducing yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Daniel Lishka. I am a product manager for Tanzo Application Catalog and the future VMware Application Catalog. I joined VMware as part of acquisition of Bitnami, and I've been working as an engineer for more than 10 years. Thanks, Danu. Um, hi, Guy. Thank you for having us. Uh, I'm Shagun Tiwari. I drive product marketing and go-to-market strategy for the Bitnami application catalog and the Tanzu application catalog, soon to be VMware application catalog, or VAC, um, as Daniel mentioned. Um, and we're both in the modern apps and management business group. Um, I've been with VMware for about over a year now, um, and I joined last year in what used to be at the time cloud services business unit. Welcome. Well, thank you very much for your time today, guys, and thank you for you know coming online and talking about the Tanzu application catalog, soon to be the VMware application catalog. Um, it's very interesting. Let's just rewind a little bit and and just give some some history maybe on on the evolution of things that we've seen so far. So we we started off with the Bitnam Bitnami acquisition, and you know Daniel, you came across across the acquisition, um, which that then uh, came into our uh, cloud provider MSP program as essentially a uh, zero commit contract access to the whole port, um, Bitnami portfolio. We then uh, built application launchpad uh, on top of VMware Cloud Director, and that enabled a cloud provider then to download uh, Bitnami images. Uh, tell me if I'm missing anything. <laughs> this is all from memory. Uh, we then um, extended that for containers. Uh, so in application launchpad on a VCD environment, Today, you can run VMs and containers for Helm charts. Um, we've now introduced a uh, very recently application Launchpad SaaS edition, which is essentially doing the same thing, but it's, it's a SaaS product that VMware runs and manages. And now we're talking about the evolution of this again, the Tanzu application catalog, or let's just, let's call it the VMware application catalog from this point on. So we're all clear on that. Um, so what is the, the driving force behind this uh, VMware application catalog? Yeah, um, I can quickly take a stab at it and then Danu, perhaps you can add um, to this. Um, so essentially, um, just like you said, Guy, right, the story kind of starts from the Bitnami acquisition and, and since then evolution of the product into a uh, couple of versions, right? So, so how we see it, and we have a slide on this later as well, so we can do a deep dive as well, but um, Bitnami application catalog or Bitnami or Bitnami solutions that are also available today through the app Launchpad, right? Essentially, uh, you know, Bitnami's brand is pre-packaging um, open source applications and kind of making yeah. that available, right, um, to the developer community. Um, still has an extremely loyal developer community even today, right? About a million and a half developers today um, come to, and even more, I guess, come to bitnami.com kind of plug and play, right? Uh, these pre-packaged solutions, both containers and VMs that are available to deploy on VMware environments or hyperscaler environments, right? Uh, it's really mobility across the board, right? So that, that's always been, uh, the packaging has been, uh, you know, Bitnami's brand uh, and continuous updating as well, right? They are packaged and they're continuously automated, maintained, right? And so same solutions are available through multiple um, outlets, if you will, um, of which of course, App Launchpad has been a huge one. Mm -hmm. Now, um, kind of the value prop for um, VAC or VMware application catalog is essentially, I see it as an evolved version of Bitnami, or we also call it Bitnami for enterprise. Um, okay. And so that's kind of two different personas there, right? Bitnami is uh, the developer's paradise, right? Where uh, they get access to so many open source prepackaged solutions that they can just plug and play. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you think about production environments, right? Uh, and from an IT admin or an operator's point of view, um, open source is great. Right, but you can't really use um, open source in production, um, in, yeah. in actually production environments, right? There's IT Absolutely. compliance issues, there's transparency, auditability, like there's a whole bunch of reasons, right? Why uh, a tiny mistake in the open source software supply chain can have disastrous consequences for uh, just IT software supply chain overall. And so uh, we see Bitnami for enterprise, which is VMware app catalog as a trusted version of Bitnami. And so these are more, trusted building blocks, um, as Daniel loves to call them. And so I've uh, kind of gotten used to that language as well. These are really trusted building blocks that are customizable to an enterprise's requirements, right? So if an operator comes in and says, hey, I want a specific OS, uh, right? And, and I want ABC requirements and nothing less than that works for my IT compliance needs, great. Um, so we use the same expertise from Bitnami, but this time, instead of giving them pre-packaged solutions, 
we're actually customizing um, these images for them that can then be used across their enterprise. So an operator um, takes our expert app components, so to speak, um, has a peace of mind that yes, these are you know, security tested, vulnerability tested, um, any upstream changes in the code are automatically reflected in these apps. Um, and then they make this catalog, so to speak, available to their developers, um, such that everyone is standardizing on one catalog across the enterprise. Um, and then that kind of eliminates, eliminates you know, any need to uh, well, manage these containers manually. Um, it takes care of IT compliance needs, makes developers happy. And so it's more of a, uh, you know, that's, that's why the enterprise side of it, so to speak. That yes, developers, of course, but it's the operators that, uh, that get catered to with, uh, with VMware application catalog. Okay, so this seems to hang, and maybe we'll we're, we're switch to Daniel, this seems to hang very much on the building blocks, if I'm reading this right. It's going to be how you create those applications that are then you know, going to be compliant and, and viable for the enterprise. Daniel, can you just take us through the, the building block concept, maybe? Sure. Um, let me first add one, one more thing about TANS application catalog or VMware application catalog idea, because you know, with Bitnami, we have more than 10 years of experience. And we, we are, we were, and we are in a very unique position because we work with cloud vendors, with ISVs, and with developers. Mm -hmm. And for the last 10 years, they were giving us feedback, really valuable feedback, and we were improving the pipeline that we use for building Bitnami components. And VMware application catalog is kind of productization of the pipeline, right? And it allows us to build, as I say, trusted building blocks. And trusted building block for me is, like, if you take a look at open source uh, components today and the way you build applications in enterprise, there are different reports, but most of them, they say that more than 90% of the code in your application is coming from open source building blocks. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter, you build a block, uh, block engine, you build a very simple API service, you need memcache, you need some kind of database, PostgreSQL, MySQL, uh, you need some kind of runtime. And then on top of that, you add your 10% business logic, right? Mm -hmm. And now you have a problem, right? Like uh, where, will you, where will you get those trusted open source building blocks from? You go to GitHub, you go to Docker Hub, you go to different marketplaces, but how do you know first, like how those container images were built? What inside? Like how is it compiled? Do you have a Bitcoin miner inside or not? Like does anyone actually validate those building blocks across different Kubernetes uh, clusters? I know that Kubernetes in theory should be the same, should work the same way on AWS or on Azure or on Google, but in practice, there are some yeah. small subtle differences. And the, you know what we do with Tanz application catalog or VMware application catalog, we actually validate every building block, open source building block like Kafka, MySQL, across all Kubernetes flavors. And we provide you with test results. We provide you with programmatically processable uh, reports for CV scans, for virus scans, for validations, for bill of materials. And that's why VMware application catalog is so popular and getting traction in highly regulated industries. You know, it's because there they, they actually care about, you know, where do we get those trusted building blocks from? And they don't want to go to 10 different uh, web pages or marketplace endpoints and try to understand how to use, build in different ways, open source components. We just give them one way. It's VMware application catalog way. Yeah. I hope you answer your question. Yeah, it did. So I'm just, just want to clarify this then. So when we talk about um, an application, you've obviously got like, like you said, the MySQL database, you've got an application runtime Correct. environment. Mm -hmm. um, those are the building blocks, or are we then mm -hmm. talking about maybe the class files that are being used coming from public repositories that are being mm -hmm. vetted as well as building blocks. No, we are talking about, for me, build, those building blocks are those uh, applications, right? Application, like, yeah. Um, because application, uh, like, let's take a look at Harbor. Harbor registry uh, maintained by VMware team. 
And this is an application and it's, an, uh, it's a building block at the same time, right? Because uh, if you want to build your platform in your organization, you probably need a registry where you store all these container images. But if you take a look at the Harbor itself, Harbor depends on the other open source building blocks as well. I believe it's Redis, PostgreSQL, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh -huh. it's an opinionated so set of different building blocks that enable you to deliver faster, right? And yeah. that's what we want to do with VMware application catalog. We understand that in enterprises, they have a very specific security compliance policies. And they also have developer teams and those developers teams, they want to go faster. They want to innovate, experiment and pull those open source building blocks. And probably they don't want to think about how to use them, right? Like, mm. because like, like in theory, if you go today and search for MariaDB or if you search for any other container image, you have 10, 100 different versions. Of course, there are some maintained by the upstream, but it's not always the case. It's not always the latest. It's not always the opinionated set of configuration options you like, right? Mm. Uh, and that's what we provide. We provide opinionated library of open source building blocks validated, tested, and always kept updated by us. Well, it sounds like a fantastic offer. And, you know, Bitnami, I always regarded with high esteem in any case, because the applications came tested by Bitnami, security tested by Bitnami, prepackaged, you know, at a, at, a, at a version level by Bitnami. And I thought that was always really high value for our service providers to be able to offer this I kind of call it the guardrails. It's like guardrails mm -hmm. for development and application execution. Mm -hmm. You don't want your developers going out to the world west and grabbing whatever they feel like. You want them to be choosing from a, a very controlled, curated catalog, which has been mm -hmm. pre-vetted, pre-compiled and secured, like you say. Okay, mm -hmm. so it, I guess the devil's in the detail. So shall we uh, dive into some of the slides that you have and uh, have a, a, a deeper conversation? I'm certainly very interested in, in understanding more about how this happens and how you do the uh, creation of those building blocks, you know, whether that's a mm -hmm. service or, or something. So let's, let's run through it. Yeah, sounds good. And I think we kind of already covered the first portion of it. So I can quickly go through that. Um, and and then perhaps uh, we can do a little bit of deep dive into the product. Um, and if we have time, we can also go through a demo. Um, so essentially, like we kind of already discussed, right? Uh, VAC is a customizable selection. Um, right. So like you said, um, Guy, right, it doesn't have to be a wild, wild west and the customer can actually come in and say, hey, you know, I just want MySQL and PostgreSQL, for example, mm. uh, right, uh, on my CentOS um, uh, image. And can you do that for me and, and make sure it's um, you know, security hardened, it is trusted and prepackaged and can you deliver it to me in my private repo? Uh, right, so it's essentially a curated um, catalog, if you will. So a customizable selection of trusted, and that's why we keep stressing on the word trusted a lot. Yeah. Uh, Prepackaged open source application components that are continuously maintained, as Daniel mentioned, and verifiably tested for use in production environments. Um, hence, we cater to you know both the developer side of the world, of course, but really more on the operator um, or IT admin side of the world, because um, the whole point of this is to make sure we are maintaining enterprise compliance. Just, just one question before we move on. Um, well, it's fine. Yeah. You, you move to the next slide. But um, these uh, components are obviously going to go through their own life cycle in terms of they're going to go through updates and cr critical patching, et cetera, that they need. How does that then get um, onto the catalog? Is there Because you're providing the whole thing as one package, that whole Lego of building blocks as one thing. If one of those building blocks changes and causes the whole thing to kind of need to be reconfigured, is that something that is also looked at? It's not really, uh, um, okay. So uh, just to make sure we're on the same page, like VMware application catalog is going to provide you with those trusted building blocks in our registry or in your registry, right? Like the good thing about that is um, you can onboard your own registry and we are going to continuously start pushing those building blocks there. There are no, like you may have Kafka, you may have WordPress, um, you, have, you may have MariaDB, but there are no strict dependencies between those three, right? Like I can keep updating uh, Kafka, or I may keep updating MySQL and WordPress is not going to be affected. Another good thing is that even if something goes wrong, just because we updated the definition of uh, MariaDB or any other database, 
and there are many other components depending on them of that mm. component. Uh, we run validation. And that's a great thing about VMware Application Catalog. Before releasing any new version of any of these components, we automatically run not only verification tests, it's not only about running a container image and making sure it's up and running and uh, the content of configuration files or um, permissions uh, of different files inside are correct. It's also about functional testing and it's also about upgrade testing. So it means that if I, if I, uh, if we have a new version of Jenkins, we'll actually spin up a new instance of Jenkins on top of EKS, GK, TKG, mm -hmm. and we'll run web browser-based tests to try to log in, create a new pipeline, create a new job, and then only if those tests are passing, then we are like automatically releasing it to customers registry, right? So even if there are some dependencies, we are making sure that we are automatically validating everything. And uh, it's, uh, I love this feature of Tanzo application catalog, VMware application catalog, just because we can see problems before our customers encounter them, you know? And for many various reasons, sometimes it's because the new version of application has some breaking changes, or sometimes it may be because there are some specific um, home chart template uh, settings that do not work well on very specific Kubernetes flavor. Yeah, that's awesome to know. So that's what I was getting at. I just wanted to know that kind of upgrade procedure and, and testing. If you guys are doing a lot of the validation of that up front, that's a, a really high value to our customers because there's a lot of time, as you know, spent in that, yeah. that area, especially in production. Yeah, and then just, just the final comment. Um, of course, you know, it's not that our component, like we will not magically update uh, already running applications in our customers' environment. Like the integration point between VAC and our customers is a registry. Yeah. So yeah. we are pushing all these building blocks there, but you, Mr. Customer, you have to make your own decisions based on metadata we are providing to you and then either deploy or not, or even you're in charge of upgrading the new version. Like we did our best to test the upgrade process because I didn't say, but we also run upgrade tests for every new version of the container image. So it means that we will, um, if we have a version, new version of Jenkins, we will actually deploy the older version, we'll run upgrades, and then we'll run functional tests again. This way we will see that, you know, upgrade ac actually works for that very specific version of uh, Jenkins. The problem is that sometimes, you know, applications, they come with different plugins. Our customers change uh, database schema or install their own custom plugins. Yep. And we do not control these scenarios. So right. like the customers are in charge of that, you know, running in production process. No, I think you've done, you know, a huge amount of the legwork, particularly in the upgrade processing, make sure the upgrade work and you still would pass in the functional testing. They've also got to do their functional testing on their application once it's upgraded and make sure that's all good before they do a production push, obviously. Um, but yeah, this is this is um, significant value. Okay, sorry, next slide. <laughs> no, no, no worries. Um, and I know we've kind of discussed uh, this problem statement already, right? The, the disconnect between developers and operators, and that's kind of where we see VAC fitting in um, and the key value drop of VAC, right? It's keeping developers and operators happy. Um, and so today's landscape really is, you know, of course, we all know, right, agile development methodologies, you know, shorter innovation cycles, and everybody just wants to push uh, product um, into production faster. And so what that means is developers obviously want choice. Uh, they want to focus on the business logic rather than maintaining, you know, the base uh, VMs and base containers, while operators say, okay, open source is great, but, you know, um, I want to make sure everything's visible, secure, and compliant to IT yeah. needs. And this is the problem obviously is further exacerbated specifically when it comes to open source software, because as Danu mentioned, right? I mean, in any code today, right? 90% of the world's code, there has to be some element of open source there. Um, and obviously unaudited adoption of software is a no-no, right? It has um, the technical risks, security risks, legal risks, and kind of the list goes on. Mm. And so what actually ends up happening um, in lieu of a catalog like this is developers have to manually build their own compliant right containers um, quote unquote and, and vms and you know they're focusing their time doing that was actually building the logic right which is more value add for them 
And operators at the same time uh, have to make sure these different compliant containers and VMs that are being maintained across different developer teams, each slightly different from the other, uh, they have to make sure they're managing all of those uh, and making sure they're uh, secure, they're compliant, um, right? And actually it also takes away from the productivity of the operator as well. So it's really a developer and an operator problem. And so that's why we think, you know, the gap is IT, enterprise IT needs to empower developers with technologies that enable agility for them without compromising security um, for the IT admin or the operator. And I think we covered a bunch of this already, um, right? Uh, VMware application catalog is really Bitnami for enterprise uh, as, as how we see it. Um, it is the same Bitnami expertise that is customized to enterprise requirements, um, continuously minting, as we discussed, and privately delivered in a customer's registry. Um, right, so really, if you start from the left-hand side of the slide, right, uh, we look at upstream open source components, right? This can be any open source app, app component. Uh, the customer logs on to the VAC UI, selects which open source component they, they particularly want. Uh, for example, as we mentioned earlier as well, let's say they're, they're only looking for MySQL and Postgres, um, just for hypothesis sake. Um, they select that and then they can actually give in any customization requirement that they may have right from the base OS image um, to what format they're looking for. Are they looking for a VM? Are they looking for a container? Um, configurations, agents, tools, um, and, and like I said, what base OS image, right? And, and that's where our Bitnami build pipeline, like uh, Daniel was mentioning, this is what we are really productizing, right? Uh, the build pipeline comes in and uh, it kind of builds a custom artifact on the customer's provided golden image, um, as we call it, or the base OS image, based on their requirements, plus it gives them metadata, or what we also call kind of the proof of provenance or the bill of materials, right, which is, which is really uh, the big value add, because this is where the peace of mind comes from uh, for the operator, because it tells, tells you the test results, it tells you, okay, it's tested, it's uh, continuously updated, um, right, and kind of gives you the, what is in that container, right, the question that you can't really answer um, with, uh, with if you pull it away from GitHub, right, or, um, or any other container or application available anywhere else. So this is kind of the trusted piece, um, which is the, the bill of material that comes with the artifact itself. And then that's delivered to a private registry of, uh, in the customer's IT org. And then, you know, the customer then can, by virtue of it, um, if it's a container, obviously can be deployed on any Kubernetes stack, right? So it's actually portable across, um, uh, you know, whatever Kubernetes stack they would like to deploy it on. And we do test it on a specific set um, of Kubernetes environments as well. So really the idea here is to enable kind of a self-serve experience for developers, which they like, uh, while making sure we are enforcing the compliance, security, and operational best practices. And VAC so, also continuously, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dad. Oh, sorry, you might cover it in a minute. I just, I'm curious at the difference between delivering to the private repository versus the service catalog and what the service catalog actually is. No, this is this this is this is um, service catalog of our customers, right? Um, okay. Like 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 from from our perspective, just to be clear, like Tanzo application catalog, VM application catalog is pushing mainly to those registries, yeah, uh, GCR registries, and today we are actually sending as well metadata to those registries as well. Uh, you don't have to use our CLI, but you can to get artifacts, metadata, test results directly and programmatically. Service catalog here, it says that you may have your own service catalog and we can easily integrate it with uh, VMware application catalog content, right? And right. like we have some examples of customers, they have their own developer portals and they are pulling all metadata and container images and templates information from Harbor, their own Harbor and they uh, expose it to developers in that service catalog. So it's more about to show here that, you know, that content that we are generating and we are keeping it updated, it, it can be exposed in different ways. Like we do care about registries, but you can have your own CI CD pipelines. You may have your own service catalog, or you may have developers using uh, command line tools, uh, yeah. following documentation and, and running containers directly. That makes sense. Okay, sorry, I was I was looking at the diagram, thinking, oh, what's the service catalog there? But that makes absolute sense. Yeah, got it. <laughs> All right, uh, and I think the last part here was um, to say that VAC also continuously monitors. I think as Dan has already mentioned, um, upstream code changes. 
such that uh, any, um, any changes in the upstream code get trigger a rebuild in the Bitnami build pipeline. And that's a rebuild, retesting, and then repushing to the registry as well. And such that that's how they are always continuously uh, uh, you know, maintained and uh, updated. And that's any changes in the upstream source code products or any changes? You're only looking upstream, right? Yeah, OK. Yeah, that's Good. right. Mm -hmm. Right, um, so just quickly touching on the benefits, uh, we kind of already touched on a whole bunch of this as well. So on the developer side, right, it's, it's uh, more of a matter of convenience um, and innovating faster, where they can discover, iterate, and rapidly bring apps to production, which is what they always want to do, because they get these trusted self-service building blocks that they can uh, you know, use, and, and they're already tested on multiple platforms as well. Mm -hmm. On the operator side, um, you know, the big piece is trust, uh, trusting their content because they gain visibility into the code provenance, as we like to call it, or the proof of provenance, right? Because of the bill of materials and the metadata that comes along with the artifacts, as well as any dependencies uh, uh, that the artifact may have. So that uh, they, they always have the peace of mind to say, yes, the software is always compliant with my IT policies. Um, and of course, then, you know, as, uh, as kind of added bonus, it's um, more productivity for them because they don't have to manage all these different, you know, VMs and containers being built um, in-house by different teams, each slightly different from the other, that can constantly making sure um, and managing them across different teams because now they have a standardized catalog that they can just provide across their organization. Um, and then of course, there's also a flexibility because we do provide a choice of OS uh, to pick from. Either they provide their own golden image or they use a VMware's image. And they also we also provide a choice of registry. Either they take our uh, provider registry or they can give us their own private registry where we can simply push uh, the continuously updated artifacts to. Yeah, I see this is a really good solution for cloud providers. So they've got kind of multiple levels of solution now where today they can have their, their infrastructure, their VMs, VApps under VCD with ALP mm -hmm. delivering applications at that level. And then you've mm -hmm. got the, the, the actual code production level um, an application deployment level and a lifecycle management with that, where you can now deliver directly into a customer's registry. So if a service provider is providing Tanzu uh, Kubernetes cluster services to a customer, they can now also complement this with the VMware application catalog and deliver that security throughout, which is, is quite a cool proposition, actually, if you think about it. Yeah, it's across the stack, right? Um, mm. Infrastructure all the way to... Um, app and the interesting thing here is it's kind of both developers and operators, right? So it kind of appeals to folks across the stack. Um, yeah. While while building on Vietnamese popularity, of course, so that kind of gives it a, a bit of credibility as well. Um, yeah, definitely. And then now um, I'll hand off to Danu to kind of go through uh, features that we've mentioned, but he'll do a little bit of deep dive into what does proof of provenance mean, um, right? And and what are the different product features that truly are contributing to our, our developer and operator benefits? Take it away, Daniel. Thank you, Shagun. Um, yeah, I think we have already mentioned like uh, the big value here is a rich library of those trusted Lego blocks that you can use and build your own applications or build your own infrastructure or build your own managed services, right? Like we will make sure that we do what we do really well. We provide you with open source components that are validated always updated and fresh and provided with, you know, provenance uh, files and reports. The second thing, Shagun already talked about that, we are tracking different open source upstream projects. So, you know, it's like sometimes people are asking me, okay, so what do you do in case of CVEs? Like we are not, I mean, we do track CVEs, but it's more important to go after updates, right? Because you may have a CVE, but there is no an update for that CV, so there is no fix. But at the moment when the upstream project release a new code, we have a fix for the security issue, our system will automatically pull that change, will start compiling across all different operating systems that we support, will run validations, and if everything is okay, we'll push. Of course, it's not always fully automated, Sometimes, as I said, that's the reason why we have all these different validations, because sometimes there is a change in the code or the way the application works. And then we have a team and that team will pick up, you know, like a failure in the validation system, will review it, fix it, and again, trigger the pipeline again. And uh, 
but the, the automation piece is pretty critical for, for VMware application catalog. And finally, bill of materials. Um, this, is, this is really important because Tans application catalog, VMware application catalog provides you with, um, we call it asset spec and I will show you during the demo, how does it look like, but you can, you can see the list of all open source components libraries that we use for building a very specific container image together with the name and version. We do our best to provide you with more and more information. We will keep improving that in the future, but today you can get it and uh, you can programmatically process it as well. Okay. At the build time, we run uh, antivirus scans and we run uh, CV scans. We use Trivi and Clam and AV for, for that. And we also provide you with that kind of reports, uh, either via CLI or via, um, or via the, the registry itself. Automated, automated validation, I already mentioned that like we run in native environments. We actually yeah. run all these different applications. We run upgrades tests, we run functional tests, and we do provide you with test results as well. It's not like full, pretty complete set of tests that we run, but I just we would just want to make sure that you are aware that we at least try to run those functional tests on our side. And then two really important features of VMware application catalog. Uh, big differentiators between what we do with uh, Bitnami and what we do here. You can actually select your own custom base image. Uh, one of the base images we support today in VMware application catalog. So some customers will go and select PhotoOS. Some customers will select PhotoOS because it's, it comes with FIPS compliance, for instance. Um, some customers will go and select their own CentOS image with CIS compliance. Some customers will go and select their own Debian and the Debian image, custom base image comes with special agents and tools and uh, CA certificates they use internally uh, in the organization. Some other customers, they have like blessed golden images and everything what's run inside the Kubernetes clusters has to be built on top of that base image. So we have a way of pulling the base image and building everything on top of that, that packaging and validating again, just for those images built on custom images for our customers. And then we push everything directly to customers' registries. And finally, registries of, registry of choice, it's, it's like you can use your own registry. I will show you how you can do it today via your user interface. So you can add your own registry. Uh, of course, we also support RGB environments, but it, it has to be done via uh, pull method, right? Because we, we always push somewhere to the registry in the middle and our customers, they have to have a process in place to uh, periodically pull the Delta from those registries, uh, save it somewhere, move it to another building, disconnect the environment and recreate it uh, there as well. But we work with this kind of customers as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. That there's, I mean, I see a real play for this in our, um, particularly in our sovereign cloud partners who provide mm -hmm. data jurisdictional control over their clouds. And you know, a lot of those are public sector, government type organisations underneath them as customers um, who have real hardened image controls and often run in you know complete blacked out environments. There's no access in or out uh, to the internet. Mm -hmm. Having that kind of registry uh, relay, I suppose we could call it, is, is a, a really good feature to work around that. Just a quick question on the base image, though, because mm -hmm. I know having worked with um, a cloud providers in the past, that they often have a yes. library of base images that they approve and customers can choose that. Obviously, they, they don't stay static, so they will upgrade the base image. They will make modifications to the base image. Does your process allow for that? Is there a way yes. of updating mm -hmm. it okay cool yeah uh, so it works this way that um today we ask you for a registry where we are going to push all updated images but in the same registry you can keep your base image updated yeah. so you can you can keep it updated and our process our pipeline will pull a new version of the base image if it's necessary every time we build a new version of uh, of a container image for Kafka, Jenkins, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the good thing is like, we are currently working with um, 
a few customers around uh, improving the whole secure software supply chain on their side as well. So there are some nice things coming and we already have the POC running with them, but at some point you will be able to see a digest like the SHA, the checksum of the customer container image inside our bill of material and everything is signed. So like in the end, like what I want to uh, make sure is that if you miss a customer, download something from your registry. We want you to be uh, sure that that image has been built by us. It hasn't been mm. tempered. It was not updated. And actually it's based on your custom base image and you know exactly on which version uh, of the custom base image did we build it. Um, that's in, you know, nowadays it's, it's a must uh, to have and we are working this direction. Yeah, awesome. I mean, it's going to be, I could see there'd be some, maybe some questions around, particularly around jurisdiction, like where are the images be, going to be held if they are custom images from the service provider, perhaps. But, you know, that's kind of stuff we can sort out another time. But this is really, really interesting. And I'm, I'm so pleased to see the, the ability to have offline mode because that's been something a lot of partners have asked for. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, can we go to the next slide? Um, because I think we will try to answer uh, another very often asked question. Like what's the difference between what we have with NAMI and VMware application catalog? Uh, and as Shogun has already explained, you know, like the audience is different. The target is different. Here with Vietnami, what we are trying to enable you is to give it a try, experiment, play with new solutions. And with uh, VMware application catalog, our target are enterprises, highly regulated industries. You care about, you know, trust the building blocks. You want to know how is it built. You want to get a bill of material, right? The second, the second big difference is customization. Like here you get just Debian based images in case of VMware application catalog, you can provide us with your own custom based image or you can select one of uh, operating systems supported by us. You can use PhotonS with FIPS uh, and all those new images are going to be actually validated across all these different uh, uh, platforms and we will give you tests uh, results as well, right? Mm. And then finally, you know, the extensive metadata and, you know, all these different audit reports that we can provide you in case of VMware application catalog and you can process them programmatically. You can download them either at some point from your registry, OCI registry, or you can use CLI tool uh, today. By the way, CLI tool is still in alpha, but we have customers using that to automate different uh, tasks. So your yeah. feedback is more than welcome uh, on this. I'm sure there'll be a lot of customers out there who, who you want to automate as much as possible because that's the, especially service providers as well, you know, the minimal amount of uh, interaction is, is preferable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, we are, I think our team is great at this because like for the last 10 years, we were, we were automating at scale many companies haven't seen because we had to, and we have to today populate and keep updated like the biggest marketplaces, uh, like AWS marketplace, Azure marketplace, Google marketplace. All of these marketplaces are automatically populated with digital machine images, with different templates, multi-cloud templates, with container images, with with all this different good stuff that you can get from uh, Bitnami or right now with VMware application catalog, the enterprise way. Yeah, and I think okay. just, just to reiterate on that point, because I think it's a major, major point that you know a service provider needs to differentiate. They need to have a portfolio that is, is gonna be sticky with the customer and keep the customer on their platform for longer. But, and this, this together, even you know Bitnami at one end of this scale providing the application library to the VCD and then the other end of the scale, VMware application catalog providing, again, yeah, yeah the application library, but with all the additional security, a production, let's say a production, secure production application library, um, customized mm -hmm. to a client's choice. And this is very, very differentiated in its capability. Um, and certainly is gonna, I think, 
inspire service providers to realize there is a lot more they can offer in this direction and start yeah. hopefully monetizing more. Yeah, and you know, um, we have seen many customers of VMR application catalog actually using Bitnami in the past. And, we, and they say that, hey, yeah, we know Bitnami. We actually use that, but now we want more. Mm. We want VMR application catalog. Yeah. And uh, Bitnami is good because also it's driving that usage for VMR application uh, catalog and we, we hope for more. Excellent. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about two use cases uh, pretty quick and we can jump to the, to the demo. Um, so this is like the first customer. We are working with uh, this customer for more than one year. And you know, the scenario here is very common for other customers of VMware application catalog. We want to enable developers. We want to give them freedom. We want to improve our developer portal, but at the same time, we want to make sure that the process of approving new applications, new building blocks um, on different, from different angles, like security and compliance is much faster, right? Mm. And so we started working with them uh, right now. They have more than 20 different applications uh, built and maintained by VMware application catalog. They're building on top of their own CIS uh, certified uh, golden image. And uh, they also were providing good feedback to us. So um, there were some improvements on our side around uh, high availability and LDAP integration for some applications. Mm. And uh, yeah, and this is a good example of error gap environment integration. Uh, this is like highly regulated uh, example uh, of the company where everything has to be first approved and then can be snapshots to uh, flash drive or DVD and move to another building so it can be used in disconnected environments. And of course, as I said before, like we are doing our best to improve uh, processes, our CLI and the way we organize things in the OCI registry so our customers can build their own tooling to provide that kind of erg up environment uh, support. And this is a great example here. Yeah, absolutely. The, the second use case is uh, actually um, kind of experimental um, partner, VMware IT. And we were helping them to improve uh, a process for building database as a service uh, based on PostgreSQL and MySQL. Um, they were asking for different versions, different branches of PostgreSQL, MySQL. We are able to do it. Uh, different uh, operating systems. We are talking here about CentOS and Oracle Linux. They, they, were, they were providing us with uh, special tooling that we were installing automatically in the custom base image. And everything was automatically updated in their internal repository. And by the way, here we are talking about VMware, uh, sorry, virtual machine images. OVAs, and that's that's why I'm saying that it's experimental still. Okay, okay. Well, VMware IT manager a huge environment, um, and you know that is they are a service provider in their own right. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, this is a great use case. Yep. Okay, I think this is the last slide, right? Yeah, I think uh, we can jump into the demo real quick. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, let me share the screen. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. One sec, sorry. Technology. Come on, where is it? Don't worry, I'll, I'll cut the time. <laughs> Can you see my screen right now? It's just starting. Almost. There we go, there you go. Can you see VMware Tanzo application catalog and download CLI, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is VMware application catalogs. Today is still Tanzo application catalog, but I said, as we said, it's going to be renamed pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, this is the main console where you go to see your catalog. Uh, let's focus on Tanzo application catalog standalone flavor. And this flavor allows you to customize uh, 
applications and provide your own custom base image and provide your own custom registry. So let's start from the very beginning. As I said, we can provide you with, um, you can provide your own registry. So I have my GCR registry here uh, and uh, another one uh, with two base images and three active artifacts. You can add your own and today we do support in, at least in the UI, of course, in the pipeline, we do support more, but in the UI, you can automatically provide your GCR Harbor or Azure Container Registry. You can provide your name, the endpoint credentials, and of course, everything is going to be validated. I will keep validating it uh, uh, along, the, along the process. Then we have base images. So I added my two base images, my photon, my mini deb, and we have some VMware images provided by, by VMware, like Debian 10, CentOS, Ubuntu. And this and week, same, run, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's the same. Uh, yeah, it's uh, like you, ha you have to provide your registry and then the path to that registry, uh, to, to the base image. And we also have to validate it. Uh, yeah, we need to know, at least right now, and this process requires you to specify which operating system is actually in the container image. Uh, just because you probably can imagine that inside the pipeline, we have recipes for all these different components. And the way we package and compile, um, I don't know, uh, Kafka or Redis uh, or anything else on top of Photon is different than we do on top of Debian. So yep. we have to be aware of that. Yep. Um, and then finally, you have applications. So in my requests, you can see, you can request new applications. So I can go and I can select my Debian or I can select my custom base image. And then I will be able to select applications that I want to uh, start building with uh, Tans application catalog. And then finally, you can specify your registry and at the end, provide some kind of information and the summaries uh, is here. So that will then do a push down to the registry. Is there this, any way to do a pull from a registry? No, no, in this, in this case, what we will do, it's we are going to generate a requests in a VMware application catalog uh, database. And that request will have to be uh, today validated by engineering team and we will provide you with uh, continuously updated artifacts in a few days it's we say usually between three and five days we are working on fully automating it and connecting like the front end and the pipeline so it you know the whole process is is fully automated but today if i click submit uh, i will be able to watch like you can see here um, yeah. This is my demo environment. Uh, but you can see that the request has been created another day. We started processing it. Like we just need to make sure that we run tests against your custom base image that you know all different scenarios are going to work. And then if it works, then the pipeline definitions are updated. And once they are updated, uh, the process will just work uh, later. Uh, this is a new request I added today. Uh, but you can see that, you know, like I select my own registry, my own base image. I'm waiting for uh, engineering team to get back to me. Uh, as I said, you're working on improving that. Um, we will have some good news for you at some point. And finally, when you go to applications, uh, in the applications folder, if you focus on, let's say, standalone, and let's say we focus on Photonless Apache Airflow container image. You can see here that we are pushing to your custom registry, GCR Tans application catalog 05. Mm -hmm. uh, you have all information about version. So this is like kind of catalog, but like our customers usually are consuming those components and building blocks directly from the registry or they have their own portals or they use uh, CLI, right? Yeah. Uh, you can see validation reports here. So if you download that test results tar.gz, uh, it's, uh, it's full of four different XML files with uh, programmatically processable 
uh, test results for GKE, for PKG, et cetera, et cetera. Then finally, you have antivirus scan, asset spec. This is a bit of material I was talking about and uh, CV scans at the end, right? I assume if any uh, of those fail in the build that you do, then they're not published until they pass, like you said. They, correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So that's 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 the like the the, the protection on, on our on our side. As yeah. I said, we also have CLI, which is beta alpha. I would say you can download it and uh, use it uh, on your side to automate different processes, notifications, or if you want to. Uh, generate some, you know, developer portals for 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 your developer teams. Uh, you can do it today, or you can just use registry API, which is pretty standard, mm -hmm. um, and get it automatically uh, from there. Okay, th there was one more thing I wanted to share with you. We have one minute. Uh, if I have time, I just wanted to show an example of that bill of material. You know, like today, this is an example chart for Harbor, and you can see the amount of uh, different open source components that we are tracking here. And at the end, everything is also signed uh, with our private key. So like if you download that uh, component with our CLI, you can actually verify that it has been signed by us and it's uh, the right set of the data. No idea there were so many things included in the, in the product. That's quite incredible. And and that's yep. just exemplifying the need, right? I mean, there is a lot of need to protect yourself from all sorts of uh, malicious threats that could exist in that code. Um, okay, so just a couple of questions and we'll finish up. Um, firstly, how is this transactable for a service provider? Yeah, um, so today um, VAC is available via VCPP Direct, or I think formerly known as VCPP IA uh, yeah. motion. Okay. Um, and so really um, we have a, uh, it's the same pricing that we have available for the core field. That's the exact same thing that's applicable for our service providers. Um, we do have two versions of the product. Um, one is a team edition. Uh, in which you get uh, uh, about, I think, a limit of 25 artifacts. So you can you know, order as much as 25 artifacts in one SKU um, to the limit of 1,000 cores. So it can be deployed only on 1,000 cores. And um, you know, either of the two gets exceeded, either your 25 artifacts or 1,000 cores, then that necessitates uh, you know, the, the need for a second SKU. Um, and so that's our team edition. And then we also have, for huge deployments, we also have org edition. Um, where we have about 300 artifacts limit. Um, so, you know, in cases where it doesn't make sense for you to purchase, let's say, 10x of the team edition, right? it probably makes sense for you to purchase the org edition, um, depending on the number of cores you'd be deploying it on. Um, and there we have a limit of about 12,000 cores. So it's a much bigger skew. Um, and those two are available for commercial as well as federal uh, customers. So uh, we have that available. We also go to market through um, the Tanzu Advanced Bundle. So we're available standalone um, as commercial or federal, also as part of Tanzu Advanced, depending on whatever your customers uh, may be purchasing. Excellent. That's good to know. And I guess the last thing, just to wrap it up, is how can a cloud provider find out, where can they go to find out more information around the application catalog? Yes, great question. Uh, we do have a vault page uh, for TAC today that is soon going to be updated to VAC. Um, so in a couple of weeks, uh, but uh, that is where we're going to be putting in all information about VMware application catalog and what it means for cloud providers. Uh, but we are available as a team, so you can just reach out to us directly um, on Slack um, as well. Um, just internally speaking, that's um, uh, on TAC Assist. That our channel is TAC Assist, so in, in case of any questions on pricing, packaging, um, and how to take it market to your customers, yeah, we're available. So, um, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, how about for um, like a cloud provider externally, how would he find or she find more information about Back. Yes, so we are also available uh, on an email alias, um, our entire team, um, not just okay. uh, Danu and me, but also our engineers, because uh, we keep getting queries, you know, from, from the technical standpoint, all the way to pricing and packaging. And so, <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, tac sales at uh, vmwaregroups.com. And so we're also available um, uh, externally through an email alias as well, or you could please reach out to us directly on our email addresses and we can, we can put those out as well. Sure, thank you. And uh, is, is TAC, uh, that TAC email address, it, will it change the VAC or will it just stay as TAC? <laughs> uh, 
That's a good question. It is. We are planning. We will to make put sure to redirect. Uh, yeah. We will redirect. Yes. But <laughs> for now, the email address is uh, tack dash sales. All right, brilliant. Listen, Shagan and Daniel, thank you very much for your time today. It's been really interesting to learn about the VMware application catalog. I see this is going to be really exciting for our service providers. So thank you so much for explaining it. Thank you for, thank having, you for us. having us, guys. No problem. Okay.